Okay, Marcus, I am back with part two of your video natal chart reading. So let me just share my screen and pull up the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so we covered houses one through six. So now we're going to be getting into houses seven through 12. So we're about to get into the nitty gritty with respect to your relationship profile, which is evidenced by the seventh house activity. So you got the 16th degree of Virgo on the seventh house cusp. You got Chiron in Virgo, 25th degree. That is very much like the 16th degree. They both break down to seven. You got Mars at the seventh degree of Libra. That seven is very much like Neptune and Pisces. So it's reinforcing your seven life path number, especially that Mars, because it's right at smack dab, seven degrees, Libra. It's reinforcing that Pisces energy, Pisces rising, Saturn in Pisces, and then Neptune being in sextile with Saturn. Like your chart is so Neptunian, it's ridiculous. Or you could say so Piscean, it's ridiculous. So it explains why you're very much into beauty, fashion, design, modeling, acting, performing, basically things dealing with the arts. It also deals with you making your own products because again, the cosmetics and beauty products and you know uh, lotions and oils and salves and creams and all that good stuff, conditioners, all that falls under Pisces. So seventh house. Oh, I also forgot to mention you got that moon at the 26th degree of Libra. So you got seven, 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 and then eight. So the seventh house cusp begins at the 16th degree of Virgo. And that 16th degree of Virgo deals with attracting mates who have sob stories. So you could attract some men that have some sob stories. And that is going to pull you in, especially because you're a Pisces rising. You're just naturally empathic and compassionate and sympathetic. So a guy's sob story could really pull you in. And next thing you know, you're getting caught up with some guy that's just a hot mess. And he's just turning your life upside down. So be very wary of those mates that come with, or potential mates, I'll say, that come with the sob stories. Making sacrifices for partner who is broken. Creating grooming products that become popular. Fearing criticism, and the grooming comes in with the Virgo. Fearing criticism, passivity with respect to getting your craft out to the public. Unreal, un unrealistic expectations of others. Virgo on the seventh house cusp brings a need for more structure and consistency with respect to relationships. Virgo on the seventh cusp results in a practical approach to relationships. You attract partners who are in need of a helpmate rather than a mere romantic partner. When it comes to a relationship or marriage, you are in need of order and routine, which is why you seek out Virgoan types of mates. The partners that you attract will more than likely possess some dominant Virgo energy in their charts, whether it is the sun, moon, ascendant, Mercury, Venus, Mars, or some other planet. You look to partners to provide a sense of regularity into your life. You need a partner who is straight up and down, one who helps you to feel secure and whole. At the same time, you are drawn to potential mates who are broken in some way. This is why it's very important to get with somebody who's very established in terms of career, even if they're young, even if they're the same age as you, they should at least have a solid career path nailed down or at least have an idea of what they wanna do and they're working towards it diligently. These need to be men that are gainfully employed. They also need to be very health conscious because you don't wanna have to get with a guy who is neglectful of his health and you have to start, you know, helping him to become more, um, you know, conscious of his health and you might have to help him change his diet and all that stuff. 
Remember what I said about the stress part with that Virgo and the seven. That could get old after a while. Virgo pertains to work, service, and duty. Thus, you are apt to attract partners who are akin to being in your employ as if they are your personal assistants. You prefer a mate to be domesticated, stable, and dependable. Actually, getting with somebody who is your personal assistant could actually work in your case, especially once you start running a business. Now, Virgo in the seventh house cusp can result in attracting potential mates who are skilled in a trade or who are blue collar workers in general, such as a car mechanic or facilities management professional. You may attract mates who are customer service representatives, accountants, tax preparers, custodians, maintenance, street maintenance, and medical professionals. Could also attract a cop. Uh, you attract and a guy that's been in the military before. You attract partners who are very critical, analytical, and fault-finding. For going partners can be some of your most insufferable when of the darker manifestation. This is due to the negative attitude, constant nitpicking, pessimistic, and irritable nature of Virgo. Now you can attract some of the light-sided Virgos, the ones that are gonna be very helpful, very attentive to your needs, very detail-oriented, punctual, really caring about your welfare and well-being. A partner may be very insecure despite displaying an air of confidence. A partner or spouse could have a serious health condition requiring you to make sacrifices on his behalf. The health of a partner or spouse will be one of the main themes of your relationship, especially because Mercury, ruler of the seventh, is in the sixth house. The condition could be physical or mental. There's a chance that you could attract the health nut or clean freak variety of Virgo types. So on the one end of the spectrum, you could attract the total screw up that's always in need of your help, or you can attract the ultra neurotic, anal, clean freak, health nut type. Both of them can be hella annoying. Now due to Virgo's influence upon the seventh house, stress will be another main theme of your relationships. Chiron in the seventh house. Now Chiron is at the 24th degree of Virgo. The 24th degree of Virgo deals with love, money, and creativity, but more so on a practical level. Developing a craft augments the perfectionist tendencies of Virgo. Also, this can produce healing, soothing abilities, being exceptional in terms of your craft, skills, or abilities. This reinforces the partnership theme of the seventh house upheavals in the home life of a partner so this partner may look to you to provide him for with a place to live because he might end up getting kicked out at wherever he's staying wherever he's crashing or whatever next thing you know he wants to come move in with you oh i got that twice in there all right well, when Chiron is in Virgo, there's a need to be very conscientious where health is concerned. Chiron in Virgo can result in an unusual or acute health condition. Food allergies are a possible manifestation. There may be a need for a special diet, or you may just be very adamant about avoiding certain foods. You may be attracted to the vegan or vegetarian lifestyle. An avid interest in holistic or alternative health, that's what Chiron in Virgo can produce. And there may be some medications that are deleterious to your health. You may have a delicate constitution and digestive system. Chiron and Virgo could also result in developing an autoimmune disorder. You may have to, you may suffer from a condition of the nervous system. When you are upset, worried, or stressed out, it is very easy to develop indigestion or other stomach ailments. There could be an issue with your intestines. Stress can be a literal killer with Chiron and Virgo. That's why it's very important to attract a partner that's gonna bring you a very low level of stress or practically none at all. Now there's a need to be more discerning and discriminating, especially with respect to those who come to you for help. This can include a mate because Chiron's in the seventh house. Even when it comes to someone offering help, there's a need to be discerning. Chiron and Virgo can manifest as challenges with finding a decent job. There may be a need to explore more unique and alternative vocations. 
cleanliness and orderliness could be an issue. Now, again, because Chiron's in the seventh house, remember I told you earlier about the cleanliness, the hygiene of a partner? That could come into play with Chiron and Virgo in the seventh house. So cleanliness and orderliness could be an issue, especially in your younger years, either at the hands of others or through your own doing. You will be taught hard lessons in keeping things clean and organized if you insist upon being messy with Chiron and Virgo. Now, again, this could be projected upon your partner because Chiron's in the seventh house. So he could be a dirty bird or a messy Jesse, a garbage pail kid. Now, you may find it easy to get jobs that involve cleaning or servicing others or serving others in a very humbling manner. You need a lot of help in this lifetime due to the challenges with integrating into society. As a result, you will go through various forms of training and hands-on instruction. Now, let me go back to this part because there's a high chance you could get with a guy from a foreign country and he might need help assimilating into this country or integrating into this society. So that could be a product of that Chiron and Virgo in the seventh house, him having challenges in that area. You know, if he's coming from some, um, let me stop. I was about to say something really xenophobic. Let me stop myself before I just continue on because you know how my mouth can get. Now, let me move on. As a result, you will go through various forms of training and hands-on instruction. You need help, but oftentimes with Chiron and Virgo, you are unwilling to help yourself. There is also a tendency to help others before helping yourself. Chiron in the seventh house can be particularly difficult with respect to relationships. If you are bent upon being in a traditional relationship, some serious compromises will need to be made on both sides. Now, Chiron in the seventh can manifest as a partner or spouse who is very willful and uncompromising. Also, it can result in attracting partners who are wounded or broken. Partner inflicts wounds upon you, whether physical, mental, or emotional. So that's a possibility. A partner could expect you to make continuous excuses for his transgressions. Usually there will be issues with fairness, balance, reciprocation, and mutual respect when Chiron is occupying the seventh house. Chiron, when in the seventh house, often produces relationships that are abnormal or unconventional in some way. Chiron in the seventh is akin to forming a relationship with a man and later finding out that he is already married, whether he's married to a woman or a man. Now, it can result in shocking revelations where a spouse or partner is concerned. Some of your greatest trials and tribulations will take place via relationships, including a marriage. Also, Chiron in the seventh can result in being granted access to exclusive social circles. It can result in being the exception to the rule or where you are granted some kind of an exemption. Chiron in the seventh house can result in being a cut above the rest, but it can also result in being objectified. Healing people of what ails them. Now Chiron is in trying with Uranus and this can deal with inventing a line of grooming products, providing online consultation, alternative healing methods, a special friendship is formed through a work-related event or you could say a relationship. Joining support groups helps you to overcome your insecurity. A change in your teeth that helps you to overcome insecurities because Uranus is in Capricorn. The creation of a website that is devoted to health and wellness. A successful partnership with a manufacturing company. Establishing a presence on social media regarding your craft. Chiron is also in trying with Neptune. This can deal with making a line of organic skin and hair care products, producing magical results through your products or through something else, creating a YouTube channel devoted to health, wellness, and grooming. We already went through this because when we were talking about Neptune being your chart roller. So let me just quickly go through this. Modeling, photography, good for yoga, good for an apprenticeship, uh, relationship or marriage that begins through your business or profession, could be your assistant or apprentice. Chiron is in sexual to Pluto. That's a very powerful aspect. This can deal with being extremely resourceful, 
recycling materials and ingredients into something new, having good suppliers, combining different ingredients, elements to create synergy, successful collaborations, creating project products, my bad, that provide therapeutic benefits, uh, a licensing deal, learning about the molecular structure of substances, sexual healing, Chiron is conjoined to the asteroid Hera, and this can deal with attracting a partner who is jealous and vindictive. Hera already showed up, so it's showing up again through Chiron. So you could attract a partner who is jealous and vindictive. A partner could always be keeping tabs on you. Also, it can result in, um, it can also pertain to problems with an accountant or other people you hire to perform work for you especially when it comes to keeping track of things, counting. So that's why I mentioned accountant in particular and Chiron's in Virgo. Virgo is the sign of the accountant. Moon, so the moon is in your seventh house and it's in Libra. Oh, my bad. Oh, let me correct that just one second. And something told me to um, go through these again before I do part two. I don't know how that got on there like that. Let me just change that real quick. Let me hit escape. Okay, where's Mars at? So here's Mars, Chiron, here's Mars. Why is the moon? Oh, here it is. I don't know how that moon got let me just change this real quick. I'm gonna pause this and I'm gonna come right back. Okay, I'm back. I apologize about that. I just had some of the slides mixed up. Okay, let me share my screen again. Pull the PowerPoint back up. All right, so Mars is in the seventh house and it's at the seventh degree of Libra. Now the seventh degree of Libra that can deal with glamour, pageantry, beauty, modeling, cosmetics, essential oils, fragrances. The seventh degree in particular, when we're talking about Libra, that's like bringing that to the public. Also, this can manifest as a sick partner, a partner who was an addict, a partner who has a sob story, so that you know reinforces that 16th degree on the seventh house cuts, a partner who is very devoted to you, a partner who is dishonest and deceptive. Passivity when it comes to forming a relationship, especially because Mars is in the seventh house. So like I said, it's like you're putting it in the hands of others. And for you to be in a relationship, you're gonna have to actively put yourself out there and put yourself around the right people and actively seek out a mate or else you could be waiting for many years for somebody to seek you out, especially if you're not putting yourself in the public eye enough. Assuming the role of savior or victim, assuming the role of martyr for a partner, putting up with too much in a relationship. Now this is good for artistic expression and working within the healing profession. Now Mars and Libra brings a strong drive for fairness and equality. It also has a strong drive to fight for the rights of others and to stamp out injustices. Also, Mars and Libra can produce one of the uh, best advocates a friend can have. And also with Mars and Libra, um, you could have a problem with being fully self-reliant and you might use people as a crutch in order to get by in life. Mars and Libra also produces a tendency to place blame on others before accepting blame. Now there's a tendency to be too concerned with what others have and what others are doing, and this needs to be reduced. You are also too focused on fairness and reciprocation to the point where you may never be fully satisfied with what you have and who you're with. Now, when it comes to taking a course of action, you can be very indecisive, especially when there's a choice between two or more good options. You really wanna sample a little bit of everything before you make a firm commitment to anything. While you have a strong desire to be in a relationship, once you're in one, you'll be busy comparing your partner and the relationship itself to others. 
If a seemingly better option comes, you may be tempted to try it on for size while still maintaining ties with your existing mate. Mars and Libra can be challenged in the area of commitment and monogamy. Now you could be projecting this energy onto a mate because Mars is in the seventh house. Now, while you are very relationship oriented and you need to connect with others in order to thrive, you are also argumentative and bent upon winning every debate. So again, you could project this onto a partner because Mars is in the seventh house. Now, you do not like to start conflict, but you cannot help but to get involved when it's concerning a friend or a loved one. You are a natural mediator and arbitrator. You may often be the one in the middle of two feuding sides who is trying to keep the peace. You are bent upon appeasing both sides, and at times this can result in creating enemies due to a refusal to take a stand for one or the other. Mars and Libra is great for any kind of work where you act as an intermediary. It's great for work where you have to be up close and personal with the public. With Mars and Libra, there's a tendency to lean towards the flamboyant end. You may be a natural performer and you may be skilled at impersonating others. You may love to dress up in glamorous clothes and go to glitzy affairs from time to time. At times you are quick to judge a book by its cover and you are quick to jump to conclusions. You are also quick to point out the flaws of others, but you often fail to see your own. Now when Mars is in the seventh house, relationships, including a marriage, can be like a battlefield. Partner could be very selfish, egocentric, and inconsiderate. Also, this can cause you to rush into a relationship only to regret it once you have come to your senses. When Mars is in the seventh house, your actions are largely dictated by others, especially with those you form committed relationships. You want to be pursued instead of being the pursuer. Your actions are often too contingent upon what others will think or say. Self-determination is largely lacking in a relationship. Too much focus could be placed on your partner. Also, there could be identification with the relationship itself, which can cause you to put up with too much from a partner. Also, you could be looking for either your polar opposite with Mars and Libra, but in your case, it's like you're looking more so for your twin flame because you got Aries in the first house and then Mars is in the seventh in Libra. So you, it's like you're looking for a partner that's going to basically be a carbon copy of yourself. And with that, that could take a long time. That might not even ever happen either. So you might feel like you can only really deal with somebody who's very much like yourself because Mars is co-ruler of that first house and it's in the seventh house in Libra. Also, there was something else dealing with um, attracting somebody or wanting somebody that's very much like yourself. I'm trying to remember what's in your chart that points to that. But if I remember, I'll talk about it. Looking for, oh, Mars in the seventh house is good for working directly with the public. So Mars is in sextal to Jupiter. We already covered this aspect. So again, can manifest as a relationship with a man of a different race or nationality to meet him online. Wait a minute. No, this isn't right. Hold on. Let me stop. And again, I should have went over this real quick. Let me hit. Okay, I'm back. Again, I apologize. Hopefully that won't happen again. So got a little mixed up with the slides again. So let me go back and pull this up. So we already talked about some of the other aspects that Mars is forming in your chart. And here are some more like Mars contra parallel palettes. This right here can deal with attempts to gain approval from father or appease him. Also, these attempts could be repeated with men. Also, you could have taken martial arts classes at some point in your life, or you could attract a partner who is skilled in martial arts. Also, this deals with dispensing wisdom, attempting to figure out what makes someone tick. Mars is conjoined to the Arabic part of goods, and this can deal with the procuring of key ingredients and the creation of a product line, also forming a partnership with a wholesaler. The moon. So the moon is in Libra and it's in the seventh house. 
the moon is at the 26th degree of Libra. And that 26 degree of Libra reinforces the partnership theme of Libra, but in a challenging way. And with this, you must maintain independence despite being in a partnership. The cohabitation theme is strong with the 26th degree of Libra and that moon being there. Issues with partner's mother or family. So the partner's mother or family could be interfering in your relationship. Good for a home-based business involving the arts. Legal concerns involving the sharing of housing. A Libra moon produces a very genteel, refined, and charming personality. You are fair and equitable. Social connections are very important for a Libra moon as there is a need to exchange ideas, opinions, and sentiments with others. You are very visual and you have a need to be surrounded by beauty. Most likely you possess some artistic talent, whether it's in the realm of music, dance, acting, or the visual arts. So we already discussed your talent. Now the moon in Libra brings a natural ability for counseling due to your diplomatic and objective approach. Your aim is to remain level-headed with respect to all situations, and you are not one for creating conflict. You are more inclined to be a peacekeeper. At times, there's a tendency to be too concerned with the affairs of others, and there's also a tendency to compare yourself to others, and this can lead to feelings of insecurity and inadequacy, especially because the moon is in the seventh house. With the moon in Libra, you, are always, you always want to come across as agreeable, and cooperative, and this can sometimes be to your own detriment. At times, you could be a pushover or a doormat for others due to a need to always remain in good standing with them. There is a strong need within you to form relationships with others, and marriage may be at the top of your list of needs. You are very conscientious of the needs of others, especially your partner and other loved ones. The relationships that you form will result in gaining fuller understanding of your personality. You may not be truly aware of what you really need to feel comfortable and secure until you've experienced a few significant relationships or at least one marriage. You are very much intrigued by the opposite sex. Now there's a tendency towards indecision and endless vacillation needs to be reduced. Also with the moon and Libra, there's a tendency to lack follow through unless you are being motivated to persevere by others. There's also a tendency to follow the crowd and get caught up in trends if other factors of the chart do not counteract this trait. With a Libra moon, you have a need to remain current. So you may be very much into social media. You may enjoy joining groups and taking online surveys. Regarding home, you have an intrinsic need to share it with someone, even if it's just a pet. The Libra moon is not really conducive to living alone for extended periods of time. Living with a partner harmoniously day in and day out, however, may be one of your biggest challenges. More than likely, you'll be the one who does the most compromising. A lot of money may be spent on the upkeep of your home due to a need to impress others, or at least in order to come across as presentable at all times. The moon describes your relationship with your mother, as well as some of her main characteristics. The moon is in Libra, and this is indication of a mother who has many social connections and her occupation may entail a lot of public exposure. Your mother may be intellectual, but also artistic. Your mother may not be too outwardly affectionate or touchy-feely. Instead, she may show that she loves you through her actions and counsel. With the moon in Libra, you and your mother will either have a very close relationship or you will be bitter enemies. And I know you have a close relationship with your mother, but you did mention that she could be controlling and overbearing. And, you know, we, most of us have problems with our mothers and stuff, but that doesn't mean we don't have, you know, you don't have a close relationship. So that Libra moon in the seventh can denote a close relationship with the mother, even though sometimes she might get on your nerves. Now, sex in the physical activity sense may not be a major need unless your son, Venus, Mars, or ascendant dictates otherwise. Now, because you got all that heavy Leo energy, yeah, sex is a major need. But that moon in Libra can make you rather passive when it comes to getting your freak on. You are more about solidifying a connection on the mental level than physical. Moon square Uranus. This can result in not being receptive in terms of potential mates. Inability to form close relationships with people. 
and also this is not being emotionally receptive. Challenges with liberating self from mother's influence. Inability to connect with women on a sexual or romantic level, and that's just simply because you're gay. Lacking unconditional love. Fasting can become extreme, and that's because Uranus is in Capricorn. There could be upheavals or sudden changes in the home. Also, you could be frigid and apathetic when it comes to certain things in life. Family or mother displays a sense of entitlement towards you. The moon is also in square with Neptune, so we already discussed this, such as being trapped in a living situation, confusing people with your feminine look but masculine name, fearing commitment, feeling like an outcast with the family, especially your father's side, undergoing a metamorphosis, hormonal imbalances, at risk of being homeless at some point, facing ridicule or humiliation at the hands of family, loner tendencies could become a recluse at some point, addictive personality. The moon is running contra parallel to nemesis, and this can manifest as a court case that pertains to an injury or loss of money. Could manifest as an order of protection. A lover cleans out your bank account, so again, that can reflect that Lilith conjoined to that Taurus South Node, which again, this is why you got to be very discriminating. That's Virgo on the seventh. You got to be very discriminating when it comes to your choice of mate. You really need to put them to the test. Now, the eighth house cuts is at the 29th degree of Libra. And that 29th degree of Libra can manifest as love triangles. They are highly possible. Interference from third parties. Challenges with living with others or a partner. Living with others to reduce the cost of living. Being under pressure to perform or make decisions. Conflict regarding sexual urges and decision. A sexual bond becomes a relationship unintentionally. Legal concerns involving a home. A partner might have a wife or a family already. Possibility of bankruptcy. Possibility of foreclosure. Breaking a lease or being evicted. Conflicts with renters if you have rental property. So, mostly Scorpio falls into your eighth house. So you have the 29th degree of Libra on the eighth house cusp, but then the rest of the eighth house is Scorpio. So, you got your north node there. So your north node's at the zero degree of Scorpio. So it's right on the eighth house cusp. So that zero degree of Scorpio is pure Scorpio energy. It can manifest as power struggles, manipulation, exploitation, sex, avoidance, intensity, abuse, infections, exclusivity. Now, the Scorpio North Node is about creating a life that has a deeper meaning. Being in survival mode won't cut it. There is a need to go beyond the basic necessities and even the basic pleasures of life. Now, when the North Node is in Scorpio, life is very dynamic. You will undergo profound changes, and a good number of them will be beyond your control. Change will occur through external factors in order to prevent your life from becoming stagnant, a la the Taurus South no kind of life. If you become too fixated on the material things in life, they will be taken away. The more you try to establish an ultra safe and secure existence, the more your life will become unstable and predictable. Long distance travel is another objective of the knife house. I'm sorry, my bad. Uh, let's see. We're talking about the eighth house. Spiritual values need to be elevated over the material in this lifetime. Let me just get rid of that. But long distance travel is a major theme. Spiritual values need to be elevated over the material in this lifetime. Your life needs to have significance beyond the superficial. There's a need to develop your intuitive abilities and to heed the little voice that's inside your head more often. There is also a need to have faith in a higher power. In this lifetime, you are to become a living witness to the power of prayer. 
Transformation is a major theme of the Scorpio North Node. There will be times in your life where you will undergo major transformation, where your life is starkly different than what it was previously. The Scorpio North Node will produce a number of crisis situations, including a few that could be life-threatening. Death will be a major theme in your life in some way, shape, or form. Death in both the physical and symbolic sense. Sex will be a major theme, and you could encounter some hard lessons in this area. In this lifetime, there's a need to overcome the fear of death, treating it as a normal phase of life. By acknowledging the fact that the soul is eternal, the fear of death can be conquered. Scorpio North Node beckons you to take focus off of yourself and to place it onto others. The more you try to live for yourself, the more likely you will not be fulfilled. Now, the key to mastering the Scorpio North Node is to keep evolving. Collaboration is another major theme of the Scorpio North Node. In this lifetime, you are to collaborate with people who have goals similar to that of your own and to create synergy. You also need to be open to backdoor solutions as well. In this lifetime, you are learning that being a stickler for the rules doesn't always pay off. The more you remove yourself from the mainstream, the better. You are also going to experience every range of emotion from the heights of ecstasy to the deepest depths of despair. You may even suffer at least one emotional breakdown at some point. Psychotherapy may be necessary at some point as well. The Scorpio North Node will bring cathartic experiences that will help you to come to terms with your personal demons. Many of your personal demons will be manifested through some of the people who play significant roles in your life. Purging is another theme of Scorpio. It's important that you purge certain people, places, and things from your life to avoid falling into the Taurus South Node trap. Debt and other financial obligations will be major factors in your life as well. There is a need to be open to receiving money and possessions in a variety of ways, but with the knowledge that money and possessions are not to be hoarded. If you hoard money and possessions, you are living through your South Node, which is what you should be trying to avoid. Living through the Scorpio North Node is acknowledging the fact that money is not static, and it does the most good when it's used to support others once your basic necessities are covered. So you have the moon being conjoined to the North Node. So the moon is at the 26th degree of Libra, and it's conjoined to the North Node at the zero degree of Scorpio. So that is what you would call a dissociative conjunction. So with this aspect, it can manifest as a close bond with your mother, but it can also deal with a controlling mother at the same time. Also, you could end up being too dependent upon your mother. Moving in with a partner in order to save money. A partner could be in need of financial support, consolidation and collaboration, relocation that results in the activation of your sex life. So you might have to move from your local area in order to activate your sex life. You might also avoid certain races of men. Also too much stress could be placed on your kidneys and this could be due to drinking too much water. So you did mention that you drink a lot of water. Now, one thing that um, we are gonna have a lot of people in about 10, 20 years that have kidney failure because people have bought this line about you, you should be drinking gallons of water a day. And I'll just say this, if you're pissing like a racehorse every 15 minutes or half hour, that's a problem. So be careful of your water intake. There is a thing about drinking too much water, but they push water on you. If you notice, they push it hard and that's the water industry, the bottled water industry. All that like eight glasses of water a day, even that's kind of excessive. And you got to keep in mind that the food that we eat has water in it. Don't get me started. But anyway, just watch your water intake because people don't, People don't make the connection. Like, if you drink too much water, number one, you can flush out your electrolytes. And that can lead to dehydration, which will cause you to drink even more water if you're not, you know, smart about how your body functions. Another thing is, too much water is putting undue stress on your kidneys. So, again, anything to excess could be problematic. So, just keep that in mind. Now, this can deal with a grandmother 
being very influential in your life. Also, this is a trans aspect, so it can result in being perceived as such. So again, Marcus is not transgender. Marcus is just a gay man who happens to have an androgynous look per his choice. So, but people could perceive you as being trans, and this is an aspect that can point to that. Recreating the relationship you had with your mother in a relationship with a man. So that's possible. Also, you could end up having back problems, especially your lower back, because we're talking about Libra. So there's a possibility of surgery being needed at some point. Also, you could end up remodeling a home, you and a partner especially, and this can manifest as rental property. Venus is square in the North Node, and this can result in getting deep into debt. You could also run into issues with credit, and it could be as a result of a partner's influence. So again, got to be careful who you can deal with. Also, this can manifest as a bad licensing deal. Rejection can also result in you having to struggle to get the money that is owed to you, and that could happen through your acting career, singing career, could happen through even running a business. A relationship brings out the worst in you. Facing temptation when in a relationship. Infidelity is highly probable. Being a victim of fraud, a hacked account, betrayal at the hands of a partner. An imbalance of joint financial responsibility, being on the receiving end of hate, bad investments, an abusive relationship, problems with taxes, avoidance of women in terms of sex, and again, that's because you're a gay man, at risk of contracting an STD, avoidance of certain foods. Oh, let me, uh, before I forget, you did ask what would be the right guy for you. I guess you mean inside. Let me just drink something real quick because my voice is getting hurt. If we're talking about signs, I would say that Libra is the best sign to get with in terms of sun signs. And then Sagittarius, what else did I say? Leo, fellow Leo. And then also perhaps Gemini. So just to recap, Libra is my top pick for you. And part of that deals with the fact that Libra is in your seventh house. Now you do have Mars in Libra, so if a man's son falls on your Mars, he might be a little bit too domineering. He might be a little too aggressive. So you kind of want to stay away from the early Libras and deal with a Libra that is born during the late, latter season, I'm sorry, latter days of Libra season. So like that last week of Libra season, that would be, um, that would be legit. That would be good for you. So Libra is my top pick for you. And then Sagittarius is next in line. Gemini is next, and then perhaps a fellow Leo. So I just wanted to get that out there before I continue on. Now Uranus is square in the North Node, and this can deal with a friend that triggers hard lessons and betrayal, being a late bloomer in terms of sex, interruptions in sexual activity, being subject to upheavals, starting over, being forced to evolve through unexpected circumstances, inability to form close bonds or intimate bonds, being in danger of an online account being hacked or a case of fraud, being ousted from a group, taking breaks from social media. Also challenges with throwing things away, a one-sided friendship, the death of a friend is possible, alienating yourself, friend or associate exposes your secrets. I warned you about that before. The North Node's making a sesquic square with your ascendant. This can deal with undergoing a transformation in terms of appearance. Being mistaken for being trans. So that's another one that can result in you being mistaken for being trans. A, sur a surgical procedure on your foot. Being obsessed with appearance. Very concerned about others' perceptions of you. Could be too concerned. Being visited by a deceased loved one in a dream. Spontaneous astral projection undergoing physical therapy. That can also manifest as a near-death experience. I should have mentioned that. North Node Sesky Square Ascendant also, that can manifest as an ineffective therapist, being a victim of fraud, 
facing rejection, especially if you go the acting or modeling route. The North Node is conjoined to the Arabic part of fatality. This explains your question regarding death, and it can result in having a fatalistic view of life. Now, regarding possible causes of death, because you asked me about this, you really got to be careful about your heart because you could end up having heart failure at some point. So that could be an issue. Kidney failure could be another issue. And that's why I'm really like cautioning you about drinking too much water because you don't want to put too much stress on your kidneys having your moon in Libra and your Mars in Libra. Especially because your Mars is co-ruler of your first house. So sex could be one of your fatal flaws. You could have a fatalistic view of life. The death of someone you know could become a prominent news story. So this made me think of that email you sent me about, I believe it was your cousin. So when I saw that, I was like, wow, that could deal with that. Interest in death. So this could produce an avid interest in death or just a curiosity of it. Now, Pluto is in the eighth house. It's in Scorpio at the 27th degree and it's retrograde. Now that 27 degree of Scorpio is about individual power and strength, and it brings the power to heal. It's very much about being victorious over your adversaries, being at the top of your game. Artistry is an element of this degree. It can result in attracting deceptive men and men who deal with women and men, so basically bisexual men. Reinforces the sex theme of Scorpio. Sexual, uh, sexually attracting men well, I'm sorry, sexual attraction to men who are pet pretty yet masculine. Let me fix that. Typos are the bane of my existence. I need an editor. So can attract deceptive men, men who deal with both women and men, reinforces the sex theme of Scorpio, sexual attraction to men who are pretty yet masculine. So that's a possibility. Let me know if you're into that. Pluto's running parallel to the asteroid Juno, and this can deal with betrayal at the hands of a partner. A partner could be vengeful and jealous. A codependent relationship could ensue. Infidelity is a possible man manifestation and it can manifest as a hypersexual partner and a partner could give you a STD and you could end up with a stalker. So that concludes the eighth house. So we're gonna move on to the ninth. So we got the ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th. I'm gonna take a little short break and just regroup for a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Let me reshare my screen. Okay, so we are at the ninth house. As you can see, you got Scorpio on the ninth house cuts at the 28th degree that reinforces the travel theme of the ninth house. So you can end up becoming a world traveler and it could be through your career. You also have Juno in the ninth house and it's in Sagittarius, like I was saying before. And that could deal with an interracial relationship. It can also deal with international love. It can also pr produce problems with having or being able to exercise freedom while you're in a relationship. So your partner could have a problem with, having, with you having too much freedom, or it could go the other way around where a partner demands too much freedom. And you can also look at that Juno and Sagittarius where a partner could expect too much from you. You can also suffer from the pedestal syndrome where you put a partner on a pedestal and then when you realize that this partner is a mere mortal, then you lose interest, you become disillusioned. Ninth house. So the ninth house begins at the 28th degree of Scorpio and this produces cycles of ups and downs with respect to sex, sexual activity versus inactivity. Sexual binges could be a possible manifestation. Meeting a sex partner through your travels. Long distance car rides can help you to bond with others, including a mate. Renouncing your fate. 
So that's a possibility, adopting a new faith. Student loans could become excessive if you attend a college or university, could be awarded a scholarship. Also, this can manifest as a substantial inheritance and it could be from your father or you could receive some other windfall of money. A spiritual belief system could consume much of your time. Scorpio on the ninth house cusp brings strong convictions where spirituality and religion are concerned. On the other hand, it can result in the rejection of a spiritual belief system or organized religion as a whole. Spiritual corruption is a possible manifestation of Scorpio in the ninth house. Also, it can result in a preference for occult teachings over traditional forms of religions. It can produce an avid interest in the subject of death, near-death experiences, and reincarnation. Also, it can result in being obsessed with seeking justice or gaining knowledge. You could be involved in the criminal justice system at some point. Thus, you may be facing criminal charges at some point, or you could be the victim. Regarding higher education, Scorpio on the ninth house cusp can bring an interest in psychology, criminal justice, science, and sociology. Scorpio on the ninth can um, deal with uncovering hidden truths. You may be um, what many would consider a conspiracy theorist. Freedom is a major theme of the ninth house, and when Scorpio lies therein, your freedom can be usurped by those with whom you form bonds. So again, that Juno in Sagittarius reinforces that possibility. Long distance travel is another major theme of the ninth house. So when Scorpio is influencing it, there will be times where you are compelled to travel long distances. Certain long distance trips and vacations will be life altering. You will feel more empowered through expanding your horizons and going beyond your comfort zone. So Jupiter's in the ninth house. Now we're not gonna get into Jupiter because we already chopped it up because Jupiter is your chart ruler. So just go back to part one if you want to review what I said about Jupiter and Sagittarius in the ninth house. So just to reiterate, with that fifth degree of Sagittarius, it's good for being a published author. It's good for public speaking, driving long distances, enthusiasm for gaining higher knowledge. It can deal with a wide range of knowledge that you possess. It can produce a good sense of humor. It can result in being bilingual, or you can learn foreign languages very easily. All right, so here's your chart again. Here's Jupiter, here's Juno. So we're gonna move on to that 10th house. As you can see, you got the 22nd degree of Sagittarius on the midheaven, which would make Jupiter ruler of the midheaven. That Jupiter and Sagittarius is very much dealing with your mother, but it's also dealing with your career path as well. So the midheaven being at the 22nd degree of Sagittarius, that can deal with sudden and unexpected changes in terms of employment, being placed in work situations where you are in control or you are being controlled, inability to assume submissive positions for long periods of time. This can also deal with a controlling mother and also the overbearing theme. Jupiter in Sagittarius reinforces the overbearing theme. At risk of giving too much of your freedom over to others, Challenges with overseas companies, and that could deal with suppliers. Now, Sagittarius Manhattan can be tricky since Sagittarius is such a broad and expansive sign. This is why more focus needs to be placed upon the house position and aspects of Jupiter, planetary ruler of the archer. Jupiter, ruler of the Manhattan, is in Sagittarius and is occupying the ninth house, which compounds the themes of the Sagittarius Manhattan. There may be so many things that you would like to do that pinning down a solid career path or goals is difficult. One thing is for sure, a Sagittarius Midheaven is conducive to a career that entails heavy promotional work. It is also conducive to jobs in the legal field, social work and the gaming industry. Sagittarius on the Midheaven is also good for jobs within colleges and universities. You need jobs that will challenge your mind, but ones that are also fun and exciting. You do not do well in jobs that require you to sit behind a desk all day performing menial tasks. A career or job in particular could require a lot of travel. 
Some of this travel could be international. A job or career may afford you certain freedoms that most people don't have when employed. Sagittarius on the Midheaven is good for jobs in the publishing industry, radio and print, digital advertising. Careers where you are able to utilize your intellect and make major decisions are ideal for the Sagittarian Midheaven. The ninth house placement of Jupiter can result in a career or business that requires long distance travel. I already said that self-promotion will be integral to your success. Also, you could have trouble with manifesting your aspirations in reality. That deals with Jupiter running parallel to Neptune. Sales, marketing, promotions also can make it easy to get jobs. That's uh, Mercury trying in heaven. Why is that not showing up? Hold on. I swear I went over all this already. Oh, my God. Here it is right here. Hold on. Let me share my screen again. For some reason, it wasn't showing up. Um, just one second. I thought. Oh, my bad. I'm tripping right now. It's late at night. Well, it's early in the morning. You're going to have to forgive me. So here it is right here. Why isn't it popping up on the slideshow? Let me just do this real quick. All right. Let's try this again. Man, this part two, I apologize, man. I should have um, should have went over it one more time. All right, I'm gonna try not to be too hard on myself for these mistakes. Mercury trying in heaven. That's good for sales, marketing, and promotions. It can make it easy to get jobs, basically in any sector, because that can just deal with you know you say the right things or you just have the right type of you know, uh, communication skills that can get you into different doors. E ease and career advancement, creating a product or service that improves the lives of people, becoming a wholesaler, work-related travel, close relationship with the mother, and this can deal with daily conversations that you have with her, and working with your mother as a caregiver. Missed opportunities. Challenges with manifesting your vision and reality. Okay, this is weird because for some reason the heading is not showing up. Okay, let me hit pause and go through this one more time and work it out. Again, I apologize. Let me stop share and put. put okay, last time I promise, like, oh my goodness. But I was working on this during Mercury retrograde. So I'm thinking that's why um, things were being screwy with the animations and stuff and some of the slides being mixed up. So let me go back. Now about this Mercury trying may heaven, because your Mercury is in Leo, that can deal with becoming an actor. And with the mid heaven being in Sagittarius, that can deal with working in independent film especially because Jupiter is running parallel to Neptune. So you could get your start in independent films. And a lot of actors get their start in independent films. So there's no shame in that. Saturn square midheaven. So with Saturn square in the midheaven, this can manifest as missed opportunities. With Saturn being in Pisces, it can deal with a fear of failure that prevents you from going after your ambitions. Challenges with manifesting your vision and reality. Challenges with becoming fully independent. Lacking control where mother is concerned. So you may feel like your mother wills too much control over you and you don't have any control of your own. Losing jobs through no fault of your own. Inability to maintain long-term commitments. This can represent your parents' divorce feeling or being isolated, feeling like an outcast with respect to your family. That could be your father's family in particular, father's side of the family. Chiron is square in the mid heaven. And this can deal with where if you do uh, have a company where you are making your own products, at some point demand may exceed supply. Also, you could be operating beyond capacity. And trust me, um, you know, 
me uh, having my own business, basically you don't have time for nothing else. Your whole life is a business. So you got to keep that in mind too. And you might become so popular that demand may exceed supply. You might be operating beyond capacity. You could be stressed out as a result of all the orders that you have to fill and all that stuff. So you got to be willing to sacrifice a lot. That's your Pisces rising, Saturn and Pisces. You got to be willing to sacrifice some of your personal life, personal time, personal goals even, if you want to become successful in terms of business in particular. Now, criticism from others threatens your faith and optimism. Also, you could be too much of an idealist. We already talked about that with that Pisces energy. Being humbled by people. Mother triggers insecurities. Attracting a mate who is a killjoy, nag, or nitpick. This can result in a partner getting threatened when you exercise too much freedom. The loss of a job due to unusual circumstances. An illness takes you out of work. The midheaven is also conjoined to Juno. So this can deal with meeting a partner through your line of work, forming a business partnership. A mate expects too much from you, like I said before. And the midheaven is conjoined to Ras Al Hag, which is a fixed star that can bring trouble with women. And this could be female bosses in particular, or maybe even this could deal with your mother because we're talking about the mid heaven. Perverted tastes. Now, if it's not coming from you, it, be, it could be coming from somebody you're dealing with romantically. Drugs, medicine, mystical healing methods, hallucinations, infections, poisoning. All right, so we got past the 10th house, and now we are moving into that 11th house. As you can see, the 14th degree of Capricorn is on the 11th house cuts. That can make it a, a challenging to uh, bring your goals to fruition and in a timely matter, manner. You got Neptune and Uranus in the 11th house. Uranus is ruling the 12th house. So you got the 14th degree of Capricorn on the 11th house cuts, and this can deal with challenges with moving forward in terms of career, business, or your professional life in general, sudden advancements in the area of career or business, sudden loss of a job, challenges with maintaining a good reputation, challenges with physical movement, that could be stiffness in the joints at some point, might happen much later in life though, Issues with teeth, teeth out of alignment, the underbite, brings the chance of being affected by natural disasters. That could be earthquakes, hurricanes. Settling upon a clearly defined career path will not be easy with Capricorn on the 11th. And this is because Capricorn on this house cusp is more conducive to entrepreneurship than employment. Capricorn on the 11th house cusp is ideal for an online business in particular. You may have very few friends, and this could be due to an inability to relate to most of your peers. It would be best to befriend people who exceed you in age by a significant number of years anyway. A stable career may seem far out of reach until you become aligned with the right people. Joining professional organizations and groups will help you to become successful. Surrounding yourself with people who are ambitious and successful is sure to rub off on you. A business that addresses a humanitarian cause is a possible manifestation of Capricorn on the 11th house cusp. Also, Capricorn on the 11th house cusp is very much about social responsibility. And it was like starting in the 90s, corporations started to be about social responsibility, where before they didn't give a damn. A business in the IT industry is another option, but in your case, not so much. But you could be working with IT professionals to get your website up and running, to do web updates, all that stuff. And that would make sense if you're gonna have a company where you're selling products, um, like the grooming products, the hair conditioner, the skincare products and all that, because that website needs to be highly professional. And it needs to have, you know, that, it needs to have all those features, like where a person can, you know, the shopping cart and the online store and all that. Now you could have an invention that could be the basis for a lucrative business. So inventing, you know, hair products, the organic hair products, skincare products, 
Now, when Capricorn is on the 11th house cusp, you could be a bit behind the times, or you could just have an interest in certain historical period. Could have, you know, this interest in nostalgia. So we already talked about Neptune because Neptune is one of your chart rulers. So we're just going to gloss over that real quick. Now Uranus is in the 11th house, joining Neptune there. And it's at the 28th degree of Capricorn, it's retrograde. And again, retrograde planets can just deal with a concentration of energy where the themes are compounded, where the energy is being internalized first, and where you can just take a longer time to uh, you know, uh, release that energy. Or you could say direct that energy to constructive pursuits. Now that 28th degree of Capricorn can result in being too trusting, especially with in business. So that can be, again, remember I said there's risk of dealing with a shady company. Also friends could be hangers on. Friends could be looking for a come up or a free ride. Traveling with friends or a group of people. Sudden gains through associations or groups making upgrades. Now on an individual level, Uranus and Capricorn can result in challenges with employment and problems with authority will be common. Uranus and Capricorn denotes a lack of self-sufficiency and a dependence upon government systems. However, at the same time, individuals who have Uranus and Capricorn will have a hard time adhering to the laws and regulations of the same system they are so utterly dependent upon. Uranus and Capricorn is essentially the social justice warrior generation. Uranus and Capricorn individuals are also responsible for the creation of a lot of apps and social media sites. A lot of individuals with Uranus and Capricorn are endowed with an entrepreneurial streak, and many will create careers through the utilization of social media. So you may be no exception when it comes to this. Uranus is making a sextile with your Pluto. And this uh, produces the ability to secure a licensing deal for an invention, becoming prominent on social media. Support comes through friends and support groups, friends with benefits situation, scientific in terms of approach. This can manifest as sponsorships, helping people to transform their lives for the better, belonging to a beneficial network or society. So Uranus is running parallel to Polis, and this can manifest as martial desires. That basically means like warlike desires. So it can um, produce an interest in martial arts or fighting. If it's not you, it could be a friend that you have. Also high ambitions, domination, keen perception, success, truthfulness, spiritual power, and it can bring an affinity for horses. So let me know if you have an affinity for horses. You do have Jupiter and Sagittarius as one of your chart rulers. So Uranus is opposing the Arabic part of danger, and this can result in attracting a friend who puts your life in danger. And there's a need to beware of going to the homes of people with whom you are lo loosely associated and vice versa. Like don't be just bringing some okie doke person over to your house that you don't barely know because you could end up getting more than what you bargained for. So you gotta, again, be very discriminating with that Virgo on the seventh house cuts. This can manifest as a crazy roommate or live-in lover, being in danger of something falling on you, in danger of sustaining an injury to the knee. So here's your 11th house with Neptune and Uranus. I actually like this placement of Neptune and Uranus. My oldest daughter, she has Neptune and Uranus in the 11th house too. So of course, that's reinforcing a friendship theme and that can deal with, you know, you attracted some unsavory friends at times, not all the time. Some of these friends could be very beneficial, especially in terms of your work or you can meet friends through your line of work because Uranus is in trying to Chiron. All right, and last but not least, we have the 12th house. As you can see, the 10th degree of Aquarius is on the 12th house cusp and Uranus and Saturn are ruling that 12th house. Saturn's in Pisces, which is reinforcing the themes of the 12th house. And then um, Uranus is in Capricorn in the 11th. So 12th house become, begins at the 10th degree of Aquarius. And this can manifest as substantial gains derived through friendships and associations, 
Friends and associates can contribute to your downfall, however. Friends needing rides or you needing rides from friends. Activity on social media could be cyclic. So sometimes you could be having heavy social act, so heavy activity on social media. Other times you might just shut your page down and just need a break. Gaining knowledge of astrology through videos. A car that has issues with the electrical system or computer. Now Aquarius went on the 12th house cusp, can produce karmic induced circumstances in the areas of friends and associates. A friend could be a secret enemy in disguise. And again, Uranus being in the 11th house reinforces this energy. Now theft, rumor, slander, and betrayal could occur at the hands of so-called friends. What about your friends? Now you may become aware that a friend is up to no good through a disturbing dream. You dream in technicolor and your intuition is extremely keen. You are often aware of misfortune before it happens. Dreams of future events are commonplace with this placement of Aquarius, especially because Uranus is in the 11th house. Dreams of catastrophe, the natural disasters are a possible manifestation of Aquarius in the 12th. Now, when Aquarius is on the 12th house cusp, there is a need to be very discriminating with respect to making friends, but also with respect to spiritual groups. You could be deceived by spiritual gurus, fraudulent psychics, and other charlatans, including some bogus astrologers, within the spiritual community. You may struggle with becoming fully independent unless Saturn and Uranus, rulers of Aquarius, are in the signs that are inclined towards self-sufficiency. Now, Saturn is in Pisces, which is not inclined towards self-sufficiency. But the good thing is Uranus is in Capricorn, which is the sign of self-sufficiency. So when it comes to that 12th house, you got to be more about that Uranus energy over Saturn and Pisces. But that Saturn and Pisces will come in when it comes to you making the hair care products and skin care products and stuff like that. Now, you may also not be living exactly according to your truth. It may not be easy to achieve long-term goals unless you are fully supported by friends or associates. So that concludes your video natal chart reading. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have any comments. Any feedback will be uh, greatly appreciated. And again, I apologize for part two. It was a little uh, screwy. It was a little messy but we got through it and I believe you get the gist of everything that I said anyway. And you got some more readings coming to you. So we'll be connecting via email to set those up. And again, I hope I was able to help you to gain some understanding about your life. I do see where you could become an actor, also a model, also a singer, but again, that's up to uh, people's, uh, you know, uh, what do you call that, assessment of your singing ability, but you can always take singing classes. So to um, improve your voice, if that is what you need. So I see you being successful in all of your endeavors, just about if you're willing to work hard for it. But where I feel that you will really shine is creating a company where you are making those organic hair and skincare products. So definitely try to pursue that and try to take it all the way look at your cute self you're so adorable look hey baby let me stop but anyway um so yeah so keep the faith and put in the work because that's what it's all about to combat the tendency of that pisces energy and also that jupiter and sagittarius so you do have a couple of cards stacked against you but you really don't have any major major difficulties in your chart so if you you know play your cards right if you have your ducks in a row if you do the right thing and take a step-by-step -step approach and if you're willing to make some sacrifices you can be very very successful in terms of career in terms of your personal life again you just got to be very very selective of the type of partner you get with and you need to maintain standards even though you got that south known in taurus you're still going to have to um maintain high standards when it comes to choosing a mate but know that that scorpio north node is going to kick in in some way shape or form and there's a high chance it's going to kick in with respect to your relationships because you got that libra moon conjoined 
to the Scorpio North Node. So again, let me know if you have any questions. If anybody wants to leave a comment, feel free to do so. And if anybody would like a reading in this style, you just go to my website and order the video natal reading. And then when I uh, respond, just let me know that, it, that you want it via YouTube. Now, also you can have it where it's live interactive, where we are doing the reading together, where we see each other and I'm asking, you know, I'm answer your questions in real time. So if you rather have it in that format, you can do that as well. I also offer written natal chart readings. And for those that have placed their order for the written natal chart readings, please bear with me because I am getting them done one by one. And I will eventually get to everyone who has placed an order. Um, if you would like a natal reading quick, the video reading or getting a reading via phone is your best bet. If you wanted to get a video, I mean, a natal chart reading via phone, you would need to at least purchase a two hour reading. But it's much more economical to go with the video natal chart reading because that is more than two hours. So if you would like any other type of reading, just go to my website at rabina.com and I will be right at your service. Stay tuned for more videos. My Venus and Gemini video is on deck. I'm just waiting to get some work done so I can do put some finishing touches on it. Then it'll be good to go. I'll definitely have it uploaded before Venus leaves Gemini. Peace, many blessings, and Marcus, good luck to you. I hope everything works out in your life and I hope you get everything that you deserve, everything you, that you hope and wish for. Peace.